Greetings, audience. Today's interview is brought to you by Neek Studios Network. Being interviewed in the following is young Bahamian music artist Leon Green. <laughs> interviewed by none other than the CEO of Neek Studios Network, Gary Ferguson. Now, without further ado, let's begin. Enjoy! Some keys, all type of things that's going yeah. on. Uh, you wrong. All right, so we want to all right into it. All right. Um, so I was trying to look up like some background information on you on um Google mm -hmm. before I come into this, but like you really don't get nothing. So I just <laughs> like to ask you if you could, you know, give me a little brief of yourself and like your child. Most definitely. Up. So I'm Leon Green, mm -hmm. and um, I'm an, I've been an artist for about nine, eight years now. Um. From the Bahamas, I grew up in Nassau, Bahamas, for 18 years as well, but I'm 24 now, so, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, so that's like 19, no, 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 six, 15, eh? 19, I went off, and then now I'm back home, mm. and it's good to be back, so some of my known, I guess, known for records is um, on my mind. Mm -hmm. Number one. Now I got a lot on my mind, though. Baby, pipe down, girl, don't make me pipe up. Leave me alone when you long song. Leave me alone when you long song. Yeah. And then Bigger Than Me is another one. I'm gonna go make that money, call me. But thought I wasn't playing. I've been grinding for so long. Cause this is bigger than me. Bigger than me. I've been trying to get it just to stand up on my feet, dog. I only 19. And I have another one stirring up called Vanilla, which is off my recent project called Cross the Waters. She like she like I saw that so, one. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. No That's wonder why they get so much views. Cause like I like them. They sort of like okay, I me. Mean, I'm a Drake fan. Trizzy in the <laughs> building. That's <laughs> like cool. That's like, cool. Yeah, they sort of remind me of like his music. So like yeah. Okay, so um, uh -huh. do you have like a side job along with being a music artist? Um, I used to. I used to. Yeah, pardon. No, yeah, like um, like uh, to help you, like to support you, or like music support you through everything. So before that's a lot of a lot of people gotta understand that ain't even like realistic, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing you start for yourself is gonna start being um beneficial when it comes to finances right off the bat. Yeah. So, um, I went through a lot of different jobs being an artist. I eight, nine, yeah, I went through a lot of different jobs. But my last recent one that I talk about is me being an oil, um, service technician. Mm -hmm. okay. So I was doing that for about two years, changing and servicing like generators or different oil pumps, stuff like that. That's not the funnest. But it was it was cool to do, um, and it was just paying the bills at the time, you know. Yeah. But now I am, um, full time, into my artistry, and then I do get paid from music. It may not be my music itself, but in the industry and in the field, you you have your way of finding your money. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, do you perform? Um, I do perform. I have performed before. I don't know if you saw me or caught me out, but. Um, I performed before. I haven't performed in a while, mm -hmm. and there's a few reasons for that. Uh, I don't know if it's personal, but would you like to elaborate more on those reasons? On a few reasons. It's yeah. just uh, we right now I got a lot building. So mm -hmm. when you see my name start circling again, it's going to be with a flood of things. Okay. Because I'm working on them all consecutively, right? Mm -hmm. So this time around, I just got a different way I want to go about it, a more professional way I want to go about it. 
and I'm just doing that. So I'm laying off of performing um, on purpose. And then another hand, you know, the industry kind of, it, it don't see eye to eye when it comes to a lot of things with Bahamian artists. Mm. So we fighting for our spot in every way here. Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, are there like any Bahamian artists who inspire you at the moment, or like, or it could be worldwide? I got some Bahamian artists who inspire me. You know. One, uh, I came from school with my dog Trey. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Trey definitely inspires me, mm -hmm. um, in a lot of different ways, and we we always talk about different things like that with me in person. What inspire him? What inspire me? Um, then I have other artists like Twin them. Twin them been doing it for a long time, mm -hmm. a long time. So that's inspiration within itself. Um, and they made a huge impact because I actually was just talking to Trey about that, about how things were different. Yeah, you know, we wasn't even getting called Bohemian artists at a point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So they really changed up. They really changed up the game a little bit with that and I, I get a lot of inspiration from that and then their sounds. Judah the Lion is another one. Mm. Um because he he bends like he bends the uh the cap. You know they kinda put us in a cap as behemoth and artists like what we could and what we cannot do. Yeah they and he's been yeah. the uh, and I appreciate that type of stuff. Mm. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. So um like what first got you into music? What in, like who introduced you to it? If there's a person or like, how did you come about? So, fashion? my grandmother, um, she was singing in the church for years before she died, and when I was in grade one, she helped me enroll into the boys' brigade. I couldn't enroll until like the next year because I was still too young. Mm -hmm. But I enrolled the next year. And I was into music from then because I was playing snail. I was playing the snail and it just felt good to me, you yeah. know. Um after that I shortly went into the trumpet. Mm -hmm. And then when I got onto the mic, it was about tenth grade. So that's like two thousand and fourteen. Yeah. Dang, you have a more interesting childhood than me. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I feel like I live a few different lives yeah. yeah 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 um how do you get inspiration to like create your music like is there a specific I have thing? to go out and live life hmm. I just like every other human being out here if you stay in a confined cell for two to three weeks you understand? You can start to go to your head. Yeah. So I take that as my house, too. And it's just like, hmm. I got to go and get live life. I got to go and do things that make me happy, you know, and have fun. Yeah. Have fun while you do these things. Forget about music while you do these things as well. Just yeah. going on fun, you know. And when I come back, the feeling is still there. Mm -hmm. feeling is always still there. So that's how I build off my inspiration. Mm -hmm. so. Um, do you ever think of like switching your genre of music from like rap? Genre, to yeah, most definitely. And I've been doing that recently. Like, what's your what would you um, classify your current genre as? I have this conversation all the time, and I just be asking people like, "But what do you think it is?" Because I need help figuring it out. I need help figuring it out so bad. But certain songs could just be placed right into a genre. Mm -hmm. But especially my new songs, like some something like Vanilla, I don't know where to place that. I don't know what to call it. And I feel like that's a good thing in a way because we making our impact, mm -hmm. right? And they have to make space for us very soon. Yeah. Because now Trini Bad is a genre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that true. Was Genre two three years ago. You say saying? Yeah. So they have to make space for us in a second. Hmm. I feel you. Um. 
what is a goal that you want to um, achieve in like your career? Like say where you stand back and be like, boy, I actually made it. Like at one point of your career, would you? So I have a, I have a goal. And I tell people like, but success is determined by you. Hmm. You know what I mean? You got some people who going to say, but as soon as I went to Grammy, I made it. You got some people as soon as I hit tempo, when tempo was a thing, but I made it. Mm-hmm. Me, I don't know when I'm going to say that I made it, but I am going to sit back and appreciate things a little more when I get my first gold RIAA record. My first gold plot to put on the wall, mm-hmm. that's when I'll be like, okay, I may get some sense. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Um, t- 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 you mentioned having like um new projects. Like, do you have any? Mm-hmm. Like, what you working on like? now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got something I'm working on now. I can't share the name as I wanted to, right? Mm-hmm. But um, it's a, it's, it was just about completed, mm-hmm. and I pulled back on it because. I just re pivoted. I just, you know, re branded on how I want to deliver it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's coming, but my my more important parts right now, you can hear me? Mm-hmm. I can hear you. Yeah. My more important parts right now is definitely the singles I got coming up. I have about three to four different singles I'm working on, and I just space them out and give it time to, like, you know, yeah. brand out and see what people feel about it, see what mm-hmm. people feel about it. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. For sure. Um, how often would you say you get creators block? Often. Um, I don't. I wouldn't say I let it stop me. Mm. See, some people can throw in the towel. Oh, I gotta write this block. I gotta sit down. Yeah, yeah. I gotta. I gotta leave the studio more times. You that could happen. If mm-hmm. you've been working for a long period of time, but if you just get in there and you got a little block, you need to work beyond that. You need yeah. to push your limits, right? And I try to always push my limits. Mm. So I like your you story. Know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what would you say is the hardest part of being a musician in like the Bahamas in this small country? Well, um, so I got to give musicians their respect because musicians, we have a lot of musicians here in the Bahamas. Unfortunately, I wouldn't label myself as one mm-hmm. because they so talented. And I feel like if I do, then I'll be putting disrespect on them. So I know a lot of good pianists. I know a lot of good guitarists. Um, I used to play, so I could say I used to be a musician, right? but... Um, I'd say what makes it hard for me to be an artist here is you're not really recognized as an artist here. Not all the time. Yeah. I got some people when they walk around the city, they do open their mouth and they do be like, but your music, I, I really appreciate your music. I like it a lot. I keep going. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate things like that and I'm glad I'm home to see it so I can let people know like I do appreciate it. You know? Um... But I'd say it's it's hard because you got people who just be like, oh, Bahamian artists, Bahamian artists, Bahamian artists. We don't want to listen to no Bahamian artists, right? Yeah. But they they don't even take the time to understand each individual who is from the Bahamas and make music. They sound differently. And you got some people who do lo-fi music from the Bahamas. You got some people who try and out country music from the Bahamas. And you still got your big rake and scrape artists. I just actually caught Shine in performance the other day. Great artist, bro. And I just I just be confused on that as to why people, you know, kind of just won't be in denial of the fuck. Like that industry is growing. Mm-hmm. I think it continue to grow. And as soon as we catch one of our brothers and sisters who support us more than family at home support you, it's over with, but yeah. It's kind of over with, you know? So I'd say that's the hardest part, fighting for your, fighting for your sport, your, your scrapes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> your scrapes. Um, 
if you could change the industry in the Bahamas, mm. what would what would it be? What about it? What would it be? Change? See, okay. What about it would be changed? Um, I know for a fact that I think it's something like every concert that's happened here in Nassau or in the Bahamas at all, they have to have opening lineups of Bahamian artists or people from our culture mm -hmm. before any foreign artists touch the stage. I don't really like that. I understand it's good. I don't really like that. And here's why. Because I feel like a lot of promoters or a lot of people who put these events together feel like they only have to put you here because the event can't go on yeah. without you being there legally. So I I don't really like that fuck. It's kind of like, you know, oh, let's get the, <laughs> scare these niggas. Just get them on and, mm -hmm. you know, get them off so mm -hmm. we can get on with our event. And it's like, but if you don't want to bring me out, Joe, don't bring me out, Joe, bro. True. I got my own set of people that going to sit down and vibe and I can do my job as an artist to win people over who never had me before. Mm -hmm. So if it's a burden to bring me out, Joe, it's like, but yeah, I really want to bring these niggas out, Joe, but I have to, mm -hmm. just, you know, <laughs> I don't really like that. That's one part of the industry I changed. And then on top of that, I changed the fact that a lot of the creatives in the industry, we don't communicate as much as we should. Hmm. We should all be a little bit more in communication. Yeah, and it's always business. Sometimes it don't need to be business. Sometimes you got to catch the vibes and see what type of person these people is. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is there anybody in mind who you would like to collaborate with? Or are you open Hello? to collaboration? Did you have it? One more time, he was breaking up. Um, are you open to collaboration? Or like would you like to Yes. Meet? Yes. I love collaboration. Hmm. I love collaboration and it's just because I know a lot of really good creatives. Like, Trey is one of them people I love to collaborate with. You know, like, we only have, like, two records out. Mm -hmm. But he can tell you, we, we done got some real swift vibes in the studio. Mm -hmm. So, one day, one day very soon, you get another one. But I like to collaborate with Trey because he's a good creative and he can always take it from his perspective and bring it in. And it's like, but even if that's out my box, yeah, he can make it work. You can make it work. Um, another collaboration I really like to do. Judo was a nice collaboration as well. Unfortunately, we couldn't be in the studio at the same time. Mm. But it's this song called Brown Sugar. Mm -hmm. Me and him did. Really, really, really nice. Really nice. Wait, you know, he helped them. Huh? What's it called? Brown Sugar. Okay. Give me a minute. I think that's what we call it. Yeah. Let me see. Again, I come up this way. Yeah. I think that's what it called, though. Definitely looking that up afterwards. Yeah. But... So it's on my project called Dare You Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's on there. And another collaboration was. Uh... What? You heard me? Yeah. You heard me just... Mm hmm. So it dies with uh twin them. So I like to collaborate. Those are those are some of my biggest collaborate. And I have one coming out real, real soon with Shad Fur. <laughs> and me and him never collaborated before. Okay. And I think people are gonna really be surprised about that one. Because it's 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 nice. It's nice. It's okay. real nice. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Um, t -t 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 I think I'll wrap it up now. But with the last question, um, what advice mm -hmm. would you want to give younger, young, um, younger, upcoming, him? Yeah. I would definitely say, 
Stop looking for inspiration from places you aren't from. Mm -hmm. If you want your people buying you, stop looking for inspiration from places you aren't from or you don't really know or never lived. Right? Mm -hmm. That's my number one. Because at the end of the day, they can feel that. They can feel what's real from what's not real. Hold on. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my number one. That's my number one. I don't feel like nobody's going to support you if they can feel that it's not coming from a real place. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Um, Number two, find yourself. Don't be scared to find yourself. Like, I have hundreds of songs that never drop on this earth because I'm figuring out some things you know I, i'm exploring sounds i'm finding new sounds mm -hmm. and you can't be afraid to do that sometimes you may sound a little crazy but you have to have focus you have to have vision on where you want to take it mm -hmm. what you aiming for and that ain't gonna always sound like top tier but as long as you progressing and you get closer yeah, because I hear a lot of people saying on oh, the behemoth accent, like, it can't be used in songs. It don't sound good in songs. Listen across the waters. Like, it's it's a way I swing it in there. And I don't never take it out. When I put it in, I don't take it out. So if it's just, like, neutral, the whole song will be neutral. Or you may hear, like, you know, some word that is not in the dictionary, but you could use context clues and put it together. Yeah. Uh, you know, and my biggest test of that is always having people listen from who ain't from you. Mm -hmm. And once they could vibe and once they could kind of understand what I'm talking about, hey, cool, dog. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Once again. God say that. Yeah. You know. But thank you for having me. It was fun. You you saved my butt because I don't know what I was going to do. <laughs> it's cool, man. It's cool. Yeah. And I hope I, I hope it goes well, all right? Yeah. Thank you so much. No Appreciate problem. it. Thank you. You all too. Right. Have a great day.